Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Nancy Sutley, Chair of the White House Council on Environmental Quality, and I'm very, very pleased to welcome you to the White House and to be joined by Vice President Biden and members of the Cabinet for this middle class task force event that will provide an update on our recovery through retrofit efforts. We're honored to have the Vice President here to make some exciting announcements on this initiative in just a moment. But first, I want to talk a little bit about what recovery through retrofit is all about and how we came to be here today. As you know, the Vice President chairs the Middle Class Task Force. Under his leadership, this cabinet-level task force is focused on ways to raise the living standards of middle class working families in America. At a task force meeting some time ago, the v Vice President had a great idea. He thought it would be good to come up with some proposals to improve home energy efficiency, to save Americans money on the, their electricity bills, and expand green job opportunities here at home. He asked the Council on Environmental Quality to lead that effort. We know that there are energy saving options out there today that can cut energy use by up to 40% in each American home. And we also know that if everyone took advantage of these retrofits, Americans could save billions of dollars each year on their home energy bills. On top of this, we would support the growth of an industry that will provide long-lasting jobs for American workers. As an added bonus, we would also reduce air pollution. Upgrading all of our existing homes would curb greenhouse gas emissions by up to 160 million metric tons a year over the next decade. So this idea makes sense for our economy, for our environment, and for Americans to save on their monthly energy bills. There was only one question. Why hadn't this home energy retrofit market already taken off? To find the answer, we pulled together a broad group across, of agencies across the government and the White House. With a lot of time and hard work by everyone involved, we released the Recovery Through Retrofit Report. This report, report found three barriers to a strong nationwide market for home energy upgrades. First, homeowners lack access to useful home energy information. Second, homeowners lack access to consumer-friendly financing option for energy retrofits. And third, the country lacks skilled workers to perform these energy upgrades. Over the past year, an interagency group led by CEQ and including the Department of Energy, the Environmental Protection Agency, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, the Department of Labor, the Small Bin Business Administration, and others have been working on ways to overcome these barriers. Today, we see the fruits of this collaboration in a form of action that will have real benefits for American families. So without further delay, I'd like to introduce the man who started all of this and a tireless advocate for America's middle class. Ladies and gentlemen, the Vice President of the United States, Joe Biden. Nancy, you said it better in five minutes than my staff made the paper for me in the last five hours. Seriously. Hey, folks, how are you? Good to see you. How are you? Nice to be with you all. Thank you. Please, please sit down. Folks, thank you all very much. I really uh, be suffice it to say, Nancy's just explained it, and I should just sit down. But uh, you know, folks, I know this audience is comprised of people who understand what we're talking about to begin with. But my message, our message, is uh, hopefully going to be broadcast more broadly to the American people because this is a good news, uh, a good news, and not very costly. Uh, um, a solution, a beginning of a solution to a problem everyone, every American knows. We consume too much energy at a price that's making it difficult for us to afford it, putting ourselves in the pocket of people who run countries that aren't particularly crazy about us and causing us to have to spend literally hundreds of billions of dollars uh, in order to protect access to and avenues to and from all that oil uh, from around the world. And so uh, when the President and I got into the White House, we knew uh, bringing back this economy wasn't going to be easy. We knew the hole was deep, uh, and uh, everyone else did as well. But, uh, um, but we also knew that it presented an opportunity, an opportunity not just to meet our obligation to help people climb out of that hole 
and to put us back on track, but an opportunity to deal with some of the systemic problems we've had that we've been unwilling to or unable to or refuse to acknowledge or respond to. And energy was one of those that has not just neglected in the last administration, but for the past 30 years, we've taken no significant steps toward dealing with what we all know is a problem. There's not a one of you out there who think that we can lead the, the world in the 21st century with the same economic, or with, excuse me, with the same energy policy we've had the last 30 years. This is a small part, but an important part of dealing with a much larger problem. That economic disaster actually uh, uh, allowed us to begin to uh, put in place policies that would spark entire new industries that would define a stronger and more robust 21st century. Again, to make a, a generic statement, I don't think anybody thinks we can lead the 21st century by being built on the ruins of the 20th century economic model that we had. Where are the new jobs going to come from? Where are the new initiatives going to come from? What is it that's going to put us in a position to remain the world's leading economic power as we were in the 20th century and the 21st century? Again, this is a small piece of it, but important. We also knew there was an opportunity to what we've been trying to do for a decade now, transform the way we use energy and the type of energy that powers our lives and in the process, reduce our dependence on fuel and fossil fuels uh, while saving consumers money and uh, in their electricity and also creating jobs. And that's why through the Recovery Act, uh, we made a uh, new energy initiative a focal point of that act. Again, the Recovery Act was prompted by the economic disaster we inherited, but it also, again, presented an opportunity. And in that Recovery Act, we devoted significant resources to this problem. Whether it was investing in wind and solar or geothermal energy so we could reach our goal of doubling renewables by the year 2012. And by the way, just if we do just that, We'll have gone from 26 gigawatts to roughly 56.5. Everybody says, people at home, let's just say, what's that mean? Well, it means 16.7 million homes would be able to have all their energy needs met with just that additional renewable energy. This is a big deal. And so whether it was adding 8 million new smart meters to the eight, 18 million new smart meters to the 8 million that are currently in use by 20, uh, 2013, or whether it was going from producing 2% of the world's advanced batteries technologies, batteries, to 20% by 2012, we decided we had to invest in industries that are going to power the new economy one based on technological innovation rather than, financial rather than financial speculation. With all these efforts to move us in the direction of a nation independent from foreign oil, though, we knew that one of the quickest jolts, one of the best, the most immediate ways we could see outcomes that were desirable would come from making our buildings, our homes, more efficient. It is the low-hanging fruit out there. It doesn't require many significant technological breakthroughs to have gigantic impact on our consumption patterns. We call, uh, we call this retrofitting. You all know it, but you know when you go out there with ordinary people who are struggling to keep their job or trying to get a job, you start talking about retrofitting, you might as well start talking about Lord only knows what. And so it's important we translate in simple terms to people what Nancy talked about as to how we get people in the position to be able to retrofit, that is, make their homes more efficient, energy efficient. And that means replacing windows and doors. It means adding insulation. It means put, putting in new modern energy-saving uh, air conditioning units, heating units, hot water heaters. Things as simple and straightforward as sealing up the cracks and openings where heat leaks out. People, you know, how many of you have kids who you've watched them do the thing you hate them doing, walk over toward that outlet in the wall and figuring, oh my God, are they going to put their finger in it? And you walk over and find out, guess what? There's air blowing in or heat blowing out. Well, you know, people know this, but they don't know how to go about dealing with it, either getting the money, getting the audit, getting the, the financing to do it. And through the Recovery Act thus far, we've made hundreds of thousands of homes more efficient 
And we've helped dozens of cities who are out there coming up with plans to make entire neighborhoods more energy efficient. We were able to focus on, through the Recovery Act, we were able to focus on public housing units in America and making sure, that, and we did a great job in that. But now it, we have to expand this to let the other 100 million homeowners in this country who don't live in public housing units, who account for 22 percent of all the energy we consume in this country, and every one of you knows somebody who knows that they need to do something about the energy efficiency of their home. You don't have to have a PhD to know when you are spending a lot more money heating your home than you need to be. You know whether you need new windows. You don't know exactly what windows you need. You know that you should have insulation in the basement on those walls or on the flooring between the second and third floor or in the attic, et cetera. Sixty percent of the homes, of these hundred million homes, sixty percent are more than thirty years old. More than thirty years old. Back when homes were being built 30 years ago, even then they were a heck of a lot less efficient than they are today. But the problem is uh, these homes, these 100 million homes, don't qualify under the program that was out there up to now to go out to go ahead and retrofit those public housing and low-income housing units or people living in, a, whether it's subsidized or not, low-income housing. So more than 60 million older homes are outside the subsidized program of low-income families, and uh, we're only able to retrofit 150,000 homes a year up to now. Look, folks, there's a lot more we can do to save energy, to free us from oil, and to create jobs if we can figure out how to tap into those other, other 100,000 homes. And so folks, I mean, excuse me, 100 million homes. So to encourage people to do what they want to do in the first place and to make it happen to help those 100,000 homeowners looking for help, we're announcing three new initiatives that could, uh, could create tens of thousands of jobs and billions of dollars in savings in energy bills. First, the Department of Energy, you're going to hear a little more about this from the Secretary, is going to be announcing a new program called Home Energy Score. And here's how it basically works for a typical family. You'll be hearing from a, a, a trained contractor and or utility company. They'll be contacting you because you are a customer. Uh, and they're going to offer to come out and go through your house. It takes about an hour or less. Check out your windows, doors, your, your, your appliances, your heating units. And they're going to be able to tell you uh, by this energy audit uh, how much energy you're wasting. Or put another way, how much energy you, energy you could save. And they're going to tell you how it compares to other homes in your neighborhood. And you're also going to get a customized list of recommended improvements with information on how much your energy bill would be reduced by each one and the estimate of how much it would cost to make these improvements. For example, you might learn that you could save 300 bucks a year by investing $1,500 a year to seal up the leaks uh, that go out through your attic and adding insulation to your basement walls you'll know for sure. An expert will tell you what impact it would have. You might learn that you need a new furnace and that you know you need a new furnace. You're going to get one. But if you spend 400 bucks more than you planned on spending to buy an efficiency model furnace, you can save $150 a year, which means you'll recoup the loss of that, of that extra cost within four years. And you'll be saving from that point on. All of it is uh, clearly laid out for you by these audits. Pretty simple stuff. And, uh, and this assessment uh, would cost less than half a typical assessment now, which is about 400 bucks. And in some places, in some states, it will cost nothing because the Energy Department has provided new software tools to the Department of Energy help develop, allowing contractors to gather this information in less time and more cheaply and more accurately. So the cost would probably be cut in half to begin with, and you're going to find in a number of states that you're not going to have to pay anything for this audit. They're encouraging these audits, and they're going to essentially underwrite them, and the utility companies cooperating. And so, folks, and uh, once this is done, you will be able to know, have the solace knowing relative to the rest of your neighborhood how much energy you're using or saving, and you're going to be able to advertise that it's going to increase the net value of your home. If you're selling your home or when you come to sell your home, in a difficult market or in a, uh, in, in a bull market. You are going to get more from your home because you're going to be able to demonstrate and literally have a seal pointing out that this is an energy efficient home.
So Secretary Chu is going to tell you more about how the home energy score programs work. A lot of people uh, say, look, I know what I need, and you know people who say this to you, your neighbors and friends, I know what I need. I've known for a long time. I know if I better insulate the basement or the attic, or if I replace these windows with thermal pane windows, et cetera, et cetera, I know I can save land, but I just can't afford it. I just can't afford it. And here's where we come in. That's why the Department of Housing and Urban Development, through a new program called Power Saver, is working with banks to offer low interest loans for home energy upgrades. Secretary Donovan is going to talk about that in a minute, the so-called Power Saver program. But once you had an expert audit telling you what you needed, you can, you, you can get a low interest loan with the program the Secretary is going to talk to you about to help you pay for what you know will benefit you short term and long term. And make sure you have the best qualified team uh, to come in and check it out. That becomes the document you need to be able to qualify for these low interest loans. So we set a standard to make sure that you can uh, also pick from companies uh, uh, who do this job well. As was pointed out by Nancy, this has not been a major industry in America retrofitting to now. So we had to set out, and Hilda will talk about this, Secretary. We, we wanted to make sure that as this industry begins to burgeon, ha hiring more people, saving us these costs and energy costs, that we have qualified people out there who are able to do it. We believe that retrofitting homes has the potential to save us billions of dollars, and we believe that these projects that we are announcing today will go a long way toward growing an industry and in the process creating good jobs uh, for a good, very good public purpose. Purpose. But beyond this, we're also pushing hard to create new energy efficiency rebate program called Homestar. We've been pushing this for a while, and we need to push the Congress uh, to be able to get this done. Under this program, homeowners could be eligible for rebates uh, up to $1,500 for very simple energy upgrades like replacing inefficient old water heaters and moder with modern efficient water heaters uh, that consumers uh, uh, would uh, be able to uh, save a great deal of energy uh, and cost by installing or putting new thermal pane windows in instead of your old uh, drafty ones. But uh, uh, by the way, part of this program, if in fact uh, you had an audit, you would uh, and you went out and did everything that audit called for. Part of this program, which is almost off to the side, says that you could qualify for up to $3,000 in a rebate. Think of a rebate buying a car. You're going to go out there and the audit says that you're going to, it's going to cost you 9000 bucks to do everything you need to do. If you can demonstrate that you have done all that needed to be done to make it the most energy efficient you can make it by through this audit, you get a $3,000 rebate. So you're not out there borrowing 9000 to get it done. You're borrowing 6000 to get it done. And because of the work that Sean has done, you're going to be able to borrow from banks at a reasonable interest and at, over a period of time that makes a lot of sense for you to make the investment. Look, we all know that energy efficiency is just one piece of the puzzle. Uh, we have to continue to invest in clean energy. So we're also calling on Congress to extend a program that uh, has been really successful. It's, uh, it's the 1603 program, which is like talking Senate ease with all the public out there. It's real clear. If a company goes out and builds and operates a wind, a solar, or other clean energy project, it gets a 30% grant up front to make that investment a 30% grant up front, 30% of the cost of the program. If the program, this program was created by the Recovery Act and has been hugely successful, leading to nearly 4,000 new clean energy projects over the past two years here in the United States. Let me just give you one example. I gave you many. But in Livingston, Illinois, a wind project was financed by this program and, and built, which generates 300 megawatts, and uh, there are 86,000 homes in that community that now are not using natural gas, oil, or fossil fuels. But that program would not have been built but for this program. There's thousands others like it beginning to make a difference in people's lives, but also in total consumption in the United States. Folks, the President and I and our team have one goal. And that's for us, the United States, to lead the world in renewable energy in the 21st century. 
Ernst & Young, as all of you know, Ernst & Young, as all of you know, is one of the largest accounting firms in the United States, recently put out a report pointing out that in part because of the expiration of this program, this, this program I just described, you get 30% up front in order to build these facilities. Because of the expiration of that program, which expires at the end of 2010, we have fallen behind China as the most attractive uh, and active country in the world in renewable energy investments. Now, I want the Chinese to succeed. I think it's a net benefit of all countries grow. But we can't let that happen. America has to be number one in the world. That's why it's so important for the Congress to extend this provision, among other things, this 1603, which provides this 30 percent grant for companies making these investments. Why would we not want it done here in the United States? There's one other important provision of the Recovery Act program, which is very controversial when we f first put in. There were a lot of skeptics about whether or not enough people would qualify for it or seek it. It's a tax provision called 48C tax credit. It's a 30% tax credit off the bottom line to encourage not just investing in the generation and use of clean energy, but actually manufacturing the components here in the United States of America. We have to build new industries that build things here in the United States of America. And so if you build a wind turbine or solar panels or advanced batteries uh, and manufacture them right here in the United States, you get a 30 percent tax credit. Now, what I'm about to say is going to sound partisanly political. It's not. I can understand an argument about tax credits for investment abroad, but it baffles me why we wouldn't want to offer tax credits for people to manufacture things here in the United States of America. Let me give you one example here. In uh, Circleville, Ohio, the DuPont plant got $50 million uh, through this program to build solar panels. This proposal was so attractive and so many companies wanted to build and manufacture these components in the United States that we had considerably more applications than we could possibly accept under the tax code for people who were asking for this assistance. So we've asked the Congress to triple the amount of money available under the tax program from roughly $250 billion to $750 billion if people build here. How bad can it be if people want to get a tax credit that costs $750 billion if they're building new plants and facilities, hiring people at decent wages here in the United States to build those components that are the thing we're going to rely on to provide a considerable part of our energy needs throughout the 21st century? Look, folks, investing in this stuff is the only way to build an economy capable of not just competing in the 21st century, but actually leading as we have in the past. And making our homes more energy efficient, a major part of this is a no-brainer. It saves consumers money on their electricity. It reduces their dependence on foreign oil. It creates jobs. It's all part of efforts to fundamentally reimagine the American economy by fundamentally changing our approach to energy consumption. Look, we know we can't build an economy that looks like the one that collapsed. We have to build a new, more robust, greener economy if we expect to lead the world in this century as we did in the last. And I expect that. I expect that. And it's time for us to meet the expectations, which I have and I think almost everybody in the neighborhood I grew up in has. I expect that. I don't wish for it. I expect it, that that's the position the United States must attain. And energy efficient upgrades are one important way we can get there. So I want to thank you all, and I want to thank my colleagues behind me for being so patient. This is in a, what we call in my neighborhood a busman's holiday, having to listen to one another talk about all of this. And, uh, but you're going to hear now from the people who have uh, developed these programs and know them inside and out. I don't want to oversell this, but this is a significant start. We should imagine, imagine a country where we have 100 million energy efficient homes. There is no reason on God's green earth we can't do that. None. None. So these are the folks who are going to do it. Thank you all for listening. Mr. Secretary, you're next.
Secretary Chu. Thank you. Um, just to reiterate what uh, the Vice President said, uh, there were a number of things that uh, we've been doing in order to make the United States more efficient. But I have to t confess one thing to you. Long before I was worried about energy dependency, long before I was worried about um, uh, environmental consequences of, of what we were doing, I was in energy efficiency not for a very simple reason. I'm fundamentally cheap <laughs> and don't like wasting money. And so the goal today is equally uh, simple, uh, and the message is very simple. Uh, we're going to make it easier for families to save money by saving energy. And so the initiatives announced today are designed to break down the barriers that make it difficult for families to seize the opportunity. What are the barriers? There are financial barriers, and you'll hear from Secretary Donovan about that. There are trained labor force, and you'll hear from Secretary Solis about that. But a big barrier is the inertia and the lack of information on what to do to save money. And so we now know that uh, we have things, consumers can check on the labels of cars and appliances to see how efficient they are. But, we, but when it comes to our own homes, which is the biggest asset we, we own, uh, many times we don't know what to do, what's the most efficient things that we should do, the most cost effective things that we should do in order to save money. So to help families save money by saving energy, the Department of Energy has developed what we call a new home energy score program that's going to provide straightforward and reliable information about your home's energy usage and recommendations, specific recommendations for you on how to make improvements. So here's how it works. A trained and qualified contractor comes to your home to evaluate the structure, the heating, the cooling systems, the insulation levels, and a whole lot more. The contractor enters that information into a home energy scoring tool to generate your home score on a simple 10-point scale where 10 is the highest level. Then along with your home score, you'll receive a list of recommended energy improvements and an estimate of how each one could save you money. So it's a very simple process uh, that gives you the information you need to upgrade your homes and start saving money. And as a hypothetical example, we have here a poster for a home built in the 1960s. It's a single-story home in Pittsburgh that has a conditioned basement and has already had some energy upgrades. And the current score of the home is six. It makes recommendations, for example, and most of the recommendations are very simple, low-cost recommendations like improving the insulation, uh, sealing the air spaces, things of that nature, the air cracks. And with these simple relatively low cost improvements, it, you can get your score up to eight. And it tells you specifically what those are, what are the added insulation, and how much you're expected to save. In this case, $520. In terms of the investments, the payback, and it tells you if you invest in this, this is the expected payback period. If you invest in that, that's the expected payback period. And it varies between two and six years. So anything beyond that, you're going to be saving a lot of money, and Secretary Donovan will show you how to save, tell you how to save money immediately at the get-go. So that's the idea. Uh, we're partnering with, uh, we're, first of all, the Home Energy Program is voluntary, and it's going to be launched in 10 communities. And we're partnering with local governments, nonprofit organizations, and utilities to test and evaluate the program. Representatives from six of our partners are here today, and I want to thank them for working with us on this important program. And we ex hope to expand the Home Energy Score program nationally uh, next year. In addition, the Department of Energy is working with agencies here on additional steps to spur self-sustaining industry for home energy upgrades. And uh, so you will hear from uh, Secretaries Donovan Solis about those. But the bottom line, and all that we're here to tell you about, is that uh, saving money by saving energy is really the right thing to do, not only for yourselves, but our economy, our energy security, and of course, uh, you know, what's in it for me? What's in it for me is uh, you're bringing these savings right back to you, your pocketbook, uh, and you can spend it on a lot of other things. So these are very much win-win-win situations. And so with that, I'll turn it over to Secretary Donovan, who can tell you how to get the money 
so you're not out of pocket, and on a month-to-month -month basis, you begin saving energy. Secretary. Thank you, Steve. Um, let me first just start by recognizing Vice President Biden and his remarkable leadership uh, in bringing this idea together, getting us started down this path uh, a year ago. And also thank all of you for the remarkable partnership that you've provided. Uh, it's enormously exciting to be here today because this is really about building on the work that you all have done uh, through the Recovery Act, through all of the work that we've done together to take that to a whole new scale, to be able to reach the scale, as the Vice President talked about, that we need to truly transform all of our homes in this country uh, and to be able to create jobs uh, in the 21st century. Um, Steve talked about the barriers we have to information. Uh, but the barrier to financing uh, home improvements is substantial as well. Think about the fact that Americans spend $200 billion every year on uh, their utility bills, their home energy bills. And yet, there is no uh, really good option for financing those improvements. What options there are are typically unaffordable. Uh, they include home equity lines, unsecured personal loans, and credit cards. And that's why countless communities, so many of you in this room today, have taken uh, really remarkable steps to drive demand and to build local retrofit programs around the country. But given the scope of the challenge, it's clear that an additional option is needed, one that's available through mainstream lenders that homeowners across the country can access uh, to make energy improvements of their choice. To solve that challenge, we have turned to the Federal Housing Administration, or FHA. FHA throughout its history has pioneered new lending products, including the 30-year mortgage, which today has become the standard across the country. Um, under the leadership of Commissioner Stevens and with the remarkable help of Vicki Bott, who runs uh, the single family uh, part of FHA, and she's with us today. I want to recognize you, Vicki, for your incredible work on this. Um, they have worked hard to create the FHA Power Saver, which I am pleased to be able to announce to you today. Beginning as a two-year pilot, Power Saver will allow homeowners to borrow an average of $12,500 over a period as long as 20 years to make energy efficiency and renewable energy improvements to their homes. I want to talk to you just about three particular features of Power, Savers, Power Saver that are so important and that we believe have the potential to create a true market for home energy improvements. First, it is designed to be a true mainstream mortgage product, affordable and available to all American homeowners. This means that private lenders across the country will be able uh, to offer it. That includes national and local banks, credit unions, community lenders, all of them will be able to uh, participate. And to encourage their participation, FHA will guarantee up to 90% of the loan with a streamlined insurance claims process. Power Saver lenders will be eligible for incentive grants, uh, incentive grants as well through FHA that could even enhance the benefits to borrowers beyond the market rate for the loans. Uh, and that will include lower interest rates, uh, covering costs of fees, and other things that you might typically see on a mortgage product. Beginning today, we're seeking a limited number uh, of lenders to participate in this first pilot of the program. We've posted instructions on HUD's website explaining how lenders can apply, and we will announce uh, participating lenders uh, at, at the very beginning of next year. I would add that because liquidity is so crucial to ensuring homeowners can access these loans, we've designed Power Saver to be viable in the secondary market. And our uh, financing arm in the secondary market, Ginny May, will be an important partner with us on those efforts. And I want to re recognize Ted Tozer, uh, who runs uh, Ginny May, who's here with us today for his great work on the product as well. Secondly, Power Saver provides real protections for the taxpayer, requiring responsible underwriting criteria and guidelines. Uh, not only uh, will Power Saver loans be available to borrowers with solid uh, credit and manageable overall debt, we're going to make sure that we don't repeat the mistakes uh, that led us into this economic crisis with unaffordable uh, or even predatory mortgage products, we will make sure that these are safe loans. 
lenders will be required to have real skin in the game as well, giving them an incentive to make quality loans with sound underwriting. And to ensure that homeowners ha have make the most informed decisions possible, we're also going to strongly encourage homeowners uh, to get an energy audit, including uh, the new home energy score that Secretary Chu just, just described, so that they are aware of the most impactful, cost-effective improvements that can be made to their homes. Lastly, PowerSaver will take advantage of the data we gather on its performance. With better data that proves that these investments pay for themselves in the long run, we believe PowerSaver can unlock a much broader scale of transformation. One that is driven not just by our investments from the Recovery Act, not just by uh, federal insurance programs, but ultimately through private capital uh, that we have demonstrated to, these improvements can actually pay for themselves. That will mean true transformation of the energy market uh, going forward. We intend to prove they pay for themselves by tracking energy saved, bills reduced, and home value created. Information on PowerSaver is available on the HUD website, and we hope that all of you and communities across the country will take full advantage of it to educate and inform lenders and consumers alike of the benefits that PowerSaver will provide. So this is an enormously exciting moment, uh, one that would not have been possible, not just with uh, my team at HUD, that includes Stockton Williams that I've mentioned, but also with colleagues across the administration. I particularly want to thank Secretary Chu and Kathy Zoy, who is here, uh, who have been remarkable partners, and the rest of the DO, uh, DOE team, uh, as well as Brian Deese and Pas Pascal Noel at NEC, Brian Levine in the Vice President's Office, and Nikki Buff Buffa at, and the team at CEQ. Over the past 21 months, community after community has told us they need a flexible tool that helps to finance home energy improvements. With PowerSaver, that is exactly what we're providing making good on our commitment to reducing our dependence on foreign oil, helping families save on energy costs, and creating jobs for the clean energy economy of the 21st century. That is what this effort is about. And uh, I want to now introduce uh, somebody who knows something about creating green jobs and who's been a remarkable champion for middle class families, my colleague at the Department of Labor, Secretary Hilda Solis. Hilda? Wow. Thanks so much, Secretary Donovan. And I also want to do a shout out to Vice President uh, Joe Biden for inviting me here today this afternoon. It's an exciting announcement that we're making. It feels good to be standing here uh, knowing that we delivered on a promise that we made a year ago. And I want to say a special thank you also to Secretary Chu, uh, Donovan, and also to Administrator Jackson, who couldn't join us today. This recovery through retrofit project is another example of what we can achieve working together on a common goal. And I am proud that my agency, the Department of Labor, was a part of this effort. This year alone, as you know, more than 1.1 million jobs in the private sector have been created, yet there are still nearly five job seekers for every one job opening. This administration knows that clean energy jobs are an important part of economic recovery and security for workers. That is why the Department of Labor made significant investments in training programs for workers so they can succeed in the clean and renewable energy economy. And we know that many of these jobs will be in the area of residential energy efficiency. Retrofitting American homes to make them more energy efficient increases job opportunities and lowers, obviously, utility bills. A win-win for all American families and for our country. These jobs can and should be good jobs with livable wages, safe workplaces, full of opportunity for a secure future and a promising career. Retrofit jobs should be for everyone, especially for underserved populations. To help us grow and expand the economy, we're tapping into the contributions and creativity of women, people with disabilities, veterans, individuals with limited English proficiency, and individuals who are low income. But for retrofit jobs to be good jobs, we must ensure that workers are properly trained for the job and adequately protected on that job. Over this past year, we have worked to raise the training and certification bar so that home retrofit workers will be more qualified to do the work, to get the job done right and be protected while doing their job. 
So today, I'm pleased to announce two new tools for training and certification providers operating in the home retrofit market, the retrofit workforce guidelines and the healthy home protocols. I'd like to thank Secretary Chu and Administrator Jackson for their leadership on helping us develop these tools. And I'm also proud of the work that the Department of Labor's Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, did to ensure that worker health and safety concerns are also included in these tools. These tools were the product of collaboration between our agencies and job training providers, labor organizations, employers, building scientists, safety experts, and of course, community groups. These tools are being released today for public comment, and I hope that all of you will participate in this collaboration by sharing your ideas, your input on how to improve these materials or to make them even more useful in your work. In the end, workers are the ones who make homes more energy efficient and healthier for our families and children. We believe the tools we have announced today will benefit workers, ensuring marketable skills, safe workplaces, and career paths for these hardworking Americans. And I have to tell you, it, it has been a dream for some of us to think out loud about the creation of green jobs. And I'm often asked that as Secretary of Labor. Uh, Secretary, what is a green job? How does one get involved in them? And what does it lead to? Is it really a career? Well, I can tell you in all honesty, and what I've seen in the past 18 months that I've been in office, I've seen a true transformation of our workforce. And I expect to see much more. I hope all of you will join us in that partnership. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Secretary Solis, Secretary Donovan, Secretary Chu, and thank, thank you to all of you for joining us here today. I hope you're excited, as excited as we are about the announce, announcements that we've made today. And we're very proud of the work uh, that we're doing to support America's middle class and American jobs. We're committed to achieving real cost savings and environmental benefits for families throughout the country through these measures and other efforts. Recovery through retrofit is another demonstration of how a healthy economy and a healthy environment go hand in hand. And I want to thank all the agencies who've been involved in this 18-month-long effort for the dedication and energy and hard work they put into creating these measures, and we'll continue to work together to help build a strong nationwide energy upgrade market for Americans and American workers. So thank you all for your support, and we look forward to continuing to work with all of you uh, towards a healthy and prosperous future for the United States of America. Thank you very much for coming today.